Check, please. Welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, you will learn our thoughts on Facebook, the meta platforms, where they're headed, where they've been. We'll look at the financials and the data and show you the numbers, give you somewhat of a prediction where we think this is going to go using our stock analyzer tool. It's just math, so we'll show you where you think this price is going to go. We're going to trade this stock. We're going to have Mo show us the charts and trends if you want to trade this, so follow along. I bring your questions to Mo and Paul. They operate over $100 million in real estate, businesses, and stocks, and uh, they will provide you and I the mindset about investing in the metaverse. Moving forward, go ahead, Paul. Guys, uh, Seth, thank you. First off, guys, follow us on Instagram, Everything Money Investing, and follow Seth, Mo, and I personally on Instagram because our... Just do it. So Facebook metaverse. Did you guys see that the Brooklyn Nets had their first basketball game involving the meta feeling, the Oculus kind I of thing? I did not. Oh, oh, yeah. So we talk about the metaverse and its potential. So guess what, guys? Another thing that has a lot of potential that people are paying stupid money for. You're seeing pieces of land in the metaverse going for millions of dollars. I'm not saying that's not worth it. But this just came out, basically became a thing. that didn't come out this year, but it became a thing in the last six or nine months, and we're already selling pieces of digital land for millions of dollars. Guys, digital can be recreated at any time. We can just add more. It's just like the cryptocurrencies. When people are like, oh, it's Bitcoin, then every day a new cryptocurrency comes up. I, it, for me, let, let, the, let the dust all settle. Yeah. It's, and then find the boring companies that are generating good cash flow. It's funny. People were talking about real, real estate in the metaverse. So on earth, you buy a piece of land on the ground, but in the metaverse, you, there's, you can just go up. Well, how do we know this infinity. isn't one big metaverse right now that we're living in? That's a little deeper conversation more than this, this show, is a, Paul. This is a Mexico. <laughs> Care to join Darnell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep going, Paul. I mean, in, in, in general, you know, um, we've been back and forth, Mo. You've been back and forth on buying Facebook. You currently own this, right? I currently right? own Facebook. Yeah, it's a very small position, but I do currently own it. I've so, been reading more. Go ahead, Paul. So let's just go through the eight pillar process sure. because. Facebook, I love, I love their financials and you'll see why. So guys, this is our Everything Money software. I'm going to the eight pillars tools, meta, meta platforms, Facebook. All right, let's see a max chart on Facebook. Look at this chart. So it hit a high of 384 um, roughly in September and it got as low as 317 or so. For the four or 500 new subscribers we get every day, we welcome you in. If this is your first video, we will go through our eight pillar process to screen Facebook to see even if it's in the wheelhouse of, of before we do our due diligence. Paul, let's get after it. So guys, pillar number one, we want the five-year PE under 22.5. It is currently 38.35, so that's an X. Yeah. But again, Facebook is growing very fast, so I don't know if that's too much or, too, or not enough. I don't know. It's just initial start is, okay, it's too high. From that, from that metric. Pillar number two, we want the five-year return on invested capital beating greater than 90%, 9%. It is 14.3. So automatically, I think to myself, gee, they're pretty good about making money off their capital. So maybe this isn't too high. They pay no dividend. In the last five years, they've averaged $21.6 billion in free cash flow. And last year, they did $36 billion. So I see major growth recently in their free cash flow. Pillar number three, we want the we want revenue growth over the last five years. So we go to our income statement on our software. Five years ago, we did a $35.8 billion in, in revenue. Last year, $109 billion. Now, I think that was driven a lot by people being online more and more advertising happening. So just keep that in mind. Pillar number four, we want to see net income growth over the last five years. So we just scroll down a little bit. 15.23 to 40.3. Almost triple. 2.6 times higher. Pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. Pillar number five, guys, we want shares outstanding staying the same or decreasing. If a company has 10 shares outstanding and you own one, you own 10% of the business. If they buy back two shares, you still own your one share, but now there's only eight shares outstanding. You now own 12.5% of the business. You're being rewarded for staying in the business. So we scroll all the way to the bottom. We go to the end of the sixth year, 2.87 billion in shares versus 2.81 billion shares outstanding. So it has gone down, and not by much, but it has gone down. Check mark there. Pillar number five, debt. Seth, what do you think a company like Facebook has in terms of debt? Do you think they're going to be in this metric or not? You know, um, in terms of pillar number six, yes. we'll talk about the debt. Yes. And uh, I don't think they have a ton of debt. We've done this, this talk before. I think I remember that they're probably pretty good. Yeah, and these companies tend to, these social media companies and tech companies tend to have lower levels of debt. So here's what we do. We go back to the main page. We look at that five-year average free cash flow. We multiply it by five. 
and that equals $107.5 billion. We want their total long-term liabilities under $107.5 billion because debt for a company is like debt for people. The more debt you have, the more problems you'll have when times are tough. So we want lower levels of debt they can easily afford. So we go to the balance sheet. We scroll all the way down to the bottom. They have $18 billion in long-term debt. They can pay off their debt (laughs) in about seven months of free cash flow. Okay. <laughs> Why do they even have debt? I don't know. I, I literally want, I ask you that every single video. Why does a company like this just not go to, just go to zero debt? Uh, rates are low. Maybe they're taking advantage of it. I don't yeah. know. Guys, pillar seven and eight to do with free cash flow. Seth, can you please explain free cash flow? Everybody? Yeah, so this is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. This is the lifeblood of a company, Paul. You like looking at cash flow over something like revenue or profit because they can do so much with it, including, and here I go again, they can buy back shares with it. They can pay dividends with it. They can make acquisitions with it. They can pay down debt and they can reinvest in themselves, which is a myriad of things, right, Paul? Correct. So those are the five things. That's the true lifeblood of the business. So we make it easy for you guys. We added a line for free cash flow instead of making you guys do all the math. We added this line right here to our software. So five years ago, they did 15.7 billion. Last year, they did 35.81. That is a massive check mark. Our final metric... We take the five, we want to come up with a value for the business that we want to pay. Again, it's not set in stone, it's a starting point. We take their five year average free cash flow of 21.5, we multiply it by 20, and that equals $431 billion. We want their market cap under $431 billion. Please tell me it's 900 and some billion dollars. It's 903, Paul. Okay. So according to this, it is massively overpriced. It's an X. Now, let me show you guys our eight pillars tab in case you don't want to do any of the work. You can just click on the eight pillars tab. And it has our very favorite non-buying. Guys, our two valuation metrics are the Xs. Everything else is a check. Does that mean you don't buy the stock? Not necessarily. If you knew Facebook was going to grow 100% a year, their profit was going to grow 100% a year for the next five years, would you buy it today at this price? Of course. Absolutely, you would. And I would too. I would probably sell my soul. I would sell Seth's soul. I would do everything possible to buy more shares of Facebook. So what we did is we have the stock analyzer tool. This has been the most popular part of our software. More on that in a little bit. We use this because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow, but we don't know the future. So we have to make assumptions about the future. The stock analyzer tool allows you to make those assumptions and then it tells you exactly what you should pay for the company based on these assumptions. Okay, so let's go to it. Stock analyzer tool. First thing we do is put a number of years of analysis. You can do one to 20. I always pick 10. Revenue growth. Now, guys, look at the last 10 years. They've done 42.5% revenue growth a year for the last 10 years. That's probably not going to continue. And my goal is to be conservative and hope that the company sells for a good price relative to conservative numbers. So I'm going to do 10, 15, and 20% revenue growth. Perfect. So, Mo, give me some profit margin numbers. I mean, I think that profit margin should stay right around that 32, 33%. Let's do 32, 33, 34%. And if the metaverse is real, it could even go higher. Actually, let's do 31, 33, and 35%. Perfect. Free cash flow, I always try to mimic them if they're around each other's numbers. What do you think, Mo? Yes, I agree. What about a PE? This is the big wham- mamma jamma because people argue with us on PE all day long. Um, 14, 16, 18. I agree. I could, I could also see it going 16, 18, 20. I mean... It's a discussion. So 14, 16, 18. Guys, you might say that, oh, no. As a company gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's harder to grow. You should pay a lower PE for it. If you want to argue with me on that one, just please go out to your car, slam your head in the door a million times, come back in, and I probably and just dislike the video and move on because you don't get it. You're stupid and move on. Definitely thought that was going in some other direction when you when you well put. That was me being nice, by the way. I was going to say that was very calm. That was so kind. That was that was warm almost, Mo. (laughs) <laughs> so guys, desired return, I always put 12.5%. You can buy an ETF and get 9 or 10%. So if you want to buy an individual stock, make it worth your time, make it worth the energy, and have your margin of safety in there. 12.5%. I hit analyze. Tell me about it. Guys, low end, 244. High end, 671. Wait a minute now. So I'm trying to buy Facebook at a really low number. Mo's already buying Facebook. 313 is the price that I paid. And I have puts from 290 down to 210. I, I don't have puts that low, but I have them at 300 going all the way down to like 250. Yeah. So I'm trying to buy puts 
I'm trying to sell puts to buy the stock at a much lower price and collect income while I wait. Facebook, it, if you believe it's going to go 15% a year for the next 10 years, buy it all day. Now, here's what I'll say to that. Its income, its revenue last year was $109 billion. So 15% a year for 10 years, it would make the revenue in 10 years $440 billion. Is that reasonable? Yeah, it might be. Mm. It doesn't sound unreasonable to me. So maybe I'm being too conservative. That very well could be the case. I mean, well, Paul, you don't like growth stocks, so I mean... <laughs> yeah, he's me, being sarcastic, you idiots. To me, Go it's if, if, if the metaverse works out like everybody's saying for the past couple of weeks it has since everybody first heard about it, then yeah, we're being conservative. I mean, with all the real estate that's happening, the NFTs, Walmart's already getting into the NFT world and this and that. Here you have Nikes are already into the world of selling virtual apparel, Gap. Virtual. Under Armour, Adidas, Urban Outfitters, Ralph Lauren, Abercrombie and Fitch, luxury brands like Gucci. Yeah, Rolex, I think I'm going to regret not buying Facebook at this price. So, see, this is the this, uh, and then Roblox is getting involved with it. So, so if you, this all happens, yeah, you're going to buy a digital Gucci belt. Digital. So you're looking at me. My comparison is if you wear a Rolex, that's pretty no awesome. Why. If you wear what's better than a, ro- a real Rolex, a fake Rolex from Chinatown, and what's better than that, a Rolex that doesn't even exist. And you, you pay $8,000. <laughs> You're wearing it like, so you join so it. I'm, right now, I am actually wearing a NFT Rolex. Right now? Yeah, put your Oculus on and you'll see it. Oops, okay. I hope some people do it. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I go back and forth on Facebook and it makes me feel like maybe I should start buying a position in it. I just look at the market overall. And this is me being top-down investing, so, which most value investors are, are bottom-up. Go yeah. ahead. So I, I look at it and I say, yes, this is probably a good price for it. But I also look at it and say, and we have this discussion all the time. If the market gets hit, this is the first when the market gets Fang. hit. When the markets get hit, this is the first letter in Fang. If you don't believe that, th- that Facebook is one of the leaders of the markets at this point, you're nuts. It is going to be one of the leaders down. That's the struggle. So a good value investor would sit there and say, if I like it at today's price, I'm exactly. going to buy it. And if it falls, like Alibaba, yeah. and if it falls further, I'm going to keep buying more shares of it. Mm-hmm. So, but I still like the puts because the puts to me go, okay, if I get it at 300, I get it at 300. Great. And I get to collect income along the way for it. Yeah. You can put your Oculus on to see Moe's Rolex. Paul's wearing a Louis Vuitton butt plug this morning. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it just, it's a catheter. If, you, if, you're, if, if these numbers speak to you and this show speaks to you, you can join you us. You have mental issues of the show. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong. You got a problem. <laughs> something wrong with you, which is why we're doing it. You can get this software on your phone, baby. Right now, you can download. <laughs> Paul, tell them how they get this software. So, guys, we created a software because our users were sitting there saying, "How do we analyze stocks without waiting for you to make a video?" There are ten thousand stocks out there. They wanted to analyze them themselves. So we made our software. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. You get all of this. You get everything you've seen so far. The eight pillars tool, retirement calculator, stock analyzer, eight pillar portfolio, exclusive video content. Every single day we post one to three videos made by us only for our users. You get all of this. You get the, everything on the phone app, like Seth said. But most importantly, if you feel alone, you get the community of over 6,000 people who use the software every single day to talk about your investment ideas. Because you might be the only one of your friends who believes these thoughts. You can't talk to them. You go into the chat right here in the top right corner or on your mobile phone and talk every day about every investment idea you have. This is all for only $1 per day. Whatever price you pay, you are locked in forever. $1 per day gets you everything here. 30 years of financial data. This is a no-brainer, guys. Our competitors are $199 to $500 a month. $1 per day gets you this software. Go sign up now. Two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefits of everythingmoney.com is you don't pay sales tax yet because we're not big enough. Sign up $1 per day. And if you're looking to trade Meta, Facebook, whatever they're calling it, you can join Mo in the BitNest Nation. Tell us about it, Mo. Thith. So even if we look back to like March of last year, this this whole thing, this whole chart is going back basically a year. If you just draw a couple lines right here, you are just you've done nothing with the exception of a couple blips here and there. You really just consolidated between 360 and 320. Sad. So that's it, pretty interesting to see. You hear all the chaos about Facebook and Meta and this and that, and it fluctuated between 40 bucks. But right now. Nobody can determine which way this thing is going to go. It is going sideways down here. This is a long-term chart. What I would tell you to do is just keep this on a very tight watch list. If the stock price breaks up, go long on it. If this stochastic turns down and breaks down, go short on it. Remember, guys, like I just said, this is the first F in FANG. When, wherever the market goes, Facebook it- is going to go. And right now, unless you get a ton of volume coming in, 
you are not going to break through these moving averages. This is going back to the beginning of December, and you could see it tried to challenge a 200-day. It tried to challenge a 100-day, and it just can't do it because the volume's not there. So eventually this thing is going to move. You, This is also a good stock for day trading. You do get volatility on this. Today, it's shaping up that it could eventually get into short, shorting territory right now. That would mean that this red line is below 20%, and you were going short on it. Yesterday, let's see, could you have done anything yesterday? No. So that was cool. But... Facebook does move, and you guys know that. Facebook moves a lot, especially on big days of market movement. Facebook is always going to be a leader in this market. So if you want to learn these rules, learn how to trade from a long perspective, a daily perspective, or a day trading perspective, come and join me. You get the Trading 101 series, which is all of those rules that you need to be successful. The Employed Trader series, which is six stocks that I go through every single day and give you updates on. If you're an employed person and don't have time to sit on the charts every day, I do the legwork for you and guide you through those uh, purchases. If you want uh, my exclusive monthly seminars, one Saturday per month, you get open Q&A session with the Bid and Ask Nation and a chat community of a thousand plus people. Come and join me. And that's our take. We will keep you updated as this stock moves. Uh, my kids got the two oculi, oculi, double oculus. And, For Christmas? Uh, yep, and they're loving it. So um, we'll see how this goes. Oh, by the way, that was the number one downloaded app on Christmas Day, the Oculus app. Number oh. one downloaded, downloaded app in the Apple App Store on Christmas Day. So... We will keep up. We will keep you updated. Bundle thumbs up. Join the community. We we'll love it. See you next video.